the gym being closed are real sewer because it's like people are, oh do a home workout go for a jog yeah for sure man a home workout what am i gonna crank 20 push-ups and fucking jerk off <laughs> All right, who cares? 20. Back. Might be the last one, but uh, we're back. No, we're going to keep this thing going. Uh, we got the office space in the Toronto Zoo. We're rolling. We're going to be safe. So, uh, 2020. Year of the winter, Dick. It's, uh, it's not letting up, is it? You know, How long ago was the Australian wildfires? Oh, the Australia's burning down. I already forgot. I already moved on. Kobe. Fuck, I got perfect time and got out of here just in time. And now it's fucking, you know, Corona crazy. Corona crazy right now. Everything's shut down. The world's shut down right now. Fucking NBA's probably gone. Fuck, a lot of people are going to be gone. It's, it's rough. It's fucking rough. But uh, I'm not going to try to focus on that. I'm going to try to have a silly goose time. But it's fucking, it's pretty crazy. I went to go get groceries well, almost a week ago now, and it was, like, such a weird vibe in the place. It's like, the weirdest, like, everyone just listening to podcasts, like, minding their own business. Like, I cough in the corner, and everyone's like, oh, fuck. Like, are we going to murder this guy? Like, what are we going to do here? A cashier literally passed out. Some old ladies passed out. Hopefully it wasn't the Rona. Who knows? But uh, the lines were ridiculous. So I think she just had, like, a panic attack. That's what I'm telling myself. So we'll see, you know. It's crazy how quick this thing all, like, happened. Like, I was literally, I was in Toronto for an audish, audish life, actor. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, this is crazy, whatever, you know, because I think, like, like, he just canceled March Madness. But it was still kind of like, yeah, I don't know. And then went to London last Saturday, which, maybe not the smartest idea, but at the time, I didn't know how big of a fucking big deal this was. I was of the belief of, like, oh, this is, a, it's not going to be too bad, like, you know, it'll be a bit of a thing, you know, just chill out for a week or two and we're fine. And maybe that's still the case, I hope, but it's looking like this is not going to be good. Like, we're in this for the fucking long haul. So I read I read a Washington Post article today that's like, yeah, like the government's getting ready for 12 to 18 months of, like, you know, the coronavirus and, like, how overran all the hospitals are and nurses and it's like there's not enough people, equipment, etc. So that's a positive note to kind of just focus on, but... uh I fucking really mailed it in this week. I don't know, I don't know if it was the corona, if it, what, what was it, but I didn't do fuck all week. I was just a fucking coach chode watching movies. I ate so much junk food. I ate so much shit. Like all the chocolate bars, all the Skittles, all the jujubes. I had an entire red velvet cake, Oreo ice cream sandwiches, pizza, fucking everything I get my hands on, Balkan. Now, is that good for my diet and my physique? Probably not, but here's my mindset of it. If it is the end of the world, we're gonna, you know, food's going to be scarce. I want to jack my weight up as much as I can. I want to get thick as shit. Because then if we're eating like half a can of tuna a week, you know, my weight can gradually come down. And it'll be better for me. And I think really that's the only way I'll ever get lean. Like I would pretty much need an apocalyptic level event for me to get shredded. Because I'm a fat wop. And that's, that's just how it is. It's, it's what it is. It's what we're doing. But, uh, fuck, we'll see, I guess, man. Like the amount... Because, like, uh, with the gym being closed, they're real sewer because it's, like, people are, oh, do a home workout, go for a jog. Yeah, for sure, man. A home workout? What am I going to crank 20 push-ups and fucking jerk off? That's literally a home workout. You know. I got a, I got a kettlebell. I got a fucking ab roller. I, got, I do have a perfect push-up, so I can do the perfect, like, the Everlast, the perfect push-up things. The ones that, like, ch -ch -ch -ch. No, have I done any of it all week? No, I haven't done shit. I'm getting thick. I'm getting thick for the end of the world, man. That's just what it is. But the home workout thing and, like, the whole, like, oh, I'll go for a jog. It's, it's fucking still freezing here. Hopefully the weather clears up. I don't know. But probably a good idea to be in shape, but I like eating cake, man. I like eating cake, and I'm kind of, I don't know if, I don't think this is, like, the end of the world. But, like, if it is, I'm going out eating a red velvet cake, and that's just me. That's what I'm doing. So, I don't know. But we'll start the home workouts next week for sure. Probably not. The amount of fapping, man. Like, I've literally ran out of pornography. I've watched every pornography in the world. I've watched, I'm the guy that... I finished them all. I got there. I finished it. I binge-watched pornography. I'm done. 
Every day. We're going two days. We're doing, it's not working out. We're doing two days fop. <laughs> the two day fop. That's what we're doing. Balking and beating. That's all this fucking 2020 is so far. So, you know, 2021. It's fucking my year, dude. <laughs> this year? I don't know. I don't know, man. We'll see. I was talking to a buddy about it. I was like, well, I hope, like, I hope summer is still good, right? Like, hopefully summer is still, like, you know, we can make the most of it. He's like, man, everyone's going to be fat, fucking broke, and, like, probably, like, be dealing with, like, dead relatives. I'm like, wow, that's pretty encouraging. That's, uh, that's pretty exciting to think about it that way. But you might be right, you know, we don't know. But uh, it's, you know, it's getting that scary vibe now. It's getting that weird, like, like movie-type vibe at this point. Like, it really set in this week. So we'll see. I don't know. On a lighter note, uh, it's tough to be on a lighter note. Like it's like it's it's I'm trying to be the funniest guy in quarantine right now. You know, it's like it's not that much to like. It's it's, it's hard to like giggle and laugh about stuff where it's like yeah, the world shut down. It's not looking good right now. But we're gonna keep cranking these out. I said this would be out at seven. It's not. It'll be out. I'm recording at seven, so it'll be out at like nine or ten. Get over it. It happens. I eat a pizza. Um, crazy scenario here. So it was, it was my buddy's birthday last Saturday, Cameron. It's his birthday, and uh, we had a nice Airbnb going on in London, doing the whole thing, right? I don't touch my face. And uh, this chick, like a week before this, just to, like set the ground here. This has been going on like for two weeks now. And she uh, she sends me a text out of nowhere. Let me bring it up here. Of, uh, of her titties. And they're pretty juicy tits. She's blonde. She's got a great rock on her. It's out of nowhere a nude, right? Surprise nude. So I'm like, fuck, this is awesome. Like, there's probably nothing. There's no better text to receive than that. Just a, a hob on of big tits. Out of nowhere, here's my tits. You're like, wow, this is... Thank you, Lord. Like, I'm blessed right now. Today, I'm hashtag blessed. So I'm feeling good about it. And then I go, wow, pleasant surprise. Who's this? Question mark. Because I have no idea who this is. Said so to a couple buddies, like, the number to check. Um... Yeah, nothing. So then I didn't hear back from her for like a week. Like probably four or five days. And then I'm um, like, big fan of the tits. Let's party. I don't know, throwing it out there. Still nothing. Then I go, I feel like I need to send a dick pic so we're even. Trying that routine, right? She goes, you for sure do. You don't have to ask me twice, miss. So that was on, uh, I think, a Monday. Wait until the end of the week. Wait until Thursday. Blaster a dick pic, a great one too. Just an iconic vein. Look fucking great. My cock's been looking good lately, man. Like I was looking at it Wednesday, I was taking a good peek at it. And I was like, wow, I'm impressed right now. Cause your dick, there's a lot of factors that go into how good your dick looks. Like some days you look at it, you're like, who are you? Like what is this? Why do I even have this? Why do I have that? You suck. Why are you, why are you there? But other days you look at it, you're like, wow, like I got a fucking, I got a piece. Like we're doing well here. Like I'm proud of my vein. I got an iconic vein through the middle. I'm like, this is, it's, it's looking hungry right now. And I'm proud of it. That's rare, but it's, you know, it's weather conditions, food, testosterone, water, lighting, you know, a lot of factors go into it. But it was looking good recently. So then I'm like, oh, great. Like, you know, I had a dick pic. Next day she calls me. You know, she texts me and then she called me. She's like, wow, like nice dick, whatever. I'm like, oh, thanks. Like, you know, eat it. So... <laughs> And then uh, she's like, oh, what are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, you know, I don't know. We'll see. Like, I lied to her what city I was in. I was like, oh, I'm in Burlington, right? And she's like, what are you doing there? I'm like, oh, just hanging out, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, yeah, I'm in London right now. Like, come by. I go, what a coincidence. I'm going there tomorrow. Now, at this point, I'm going, like, naturally, I'm like, okay, is this a catfish? Like, what's going on here? But I'm still playing it by ear, right? So I'm like, yeah, I'll see you. I'm there tomorrow. Like, come by. We have an Airbnb. She's like, oh, great. I will. Just text me the address. I'm still at this point going, like, I, just, I don't get what the game is here. Like, if I'm getting catfish, I don't, like, oh, we sent you a big pair of tits. It's like, oh, you got me. <laughs> it's like, oh, we got a picture of your dick. Like, yeah, like, I'll fucking story a picture of my dick. Who gives a fuck? Like, I don't, <laughs> oh, we got a picture of Jake's dick. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll literally post a picture of my penis right now. Like, I can give a fuck. So, so on Saturday, we get to the Airbnb. I shoot her text. I'm like, here's the address, blah, blah, blah. Nothing. Goes radio silent. So now the game is just being played to an all-time level. I get blocked, and I'm probably calling her and probably whatever, being a psycho. And uh, never heard from her. So this story is still ongoing. Maybe she got corona, maybe she got quarantine, maybe she died. Who knows? I wish the best for her, but it's kind of an open-ended story where we'll never really... We need a sequel, so I'll keep you posted on that. But yeah, we went out Saturday, and uh, super weird vibes, because it's like most people are staying in, but some people are like, oh, this is bullshit, and like, I want to go out. 
we were already there. We already had the Airbnb. It was like, oh, okay, I guess we'll go out. And then after this, like, the world was shut down. Went out. Don't remember much. Got way too drunk. Uh, the next day, I looked at my phone, and I guess uh, there's a family group chat, like, on my Italian side. I'm looking at it. Everyone's blowing up on me, and I'm like, fuck, like, what happened? I started talking shit to everyone in the group chat. <laughs> it was all those nights where I don't know what happened. Like, I don't know if I thought I was talking to my cousin or my uncle. or well, I didn't know it was, like, the full family group chat. Started talking shit to them, so that wasn't good. Shared a couple of opinions they weren't too fond of, so, you know, that happens, and that's, you know, that's a tough Sunday scary to deal with that, so I automatically left the group, so I'm like, I'm not, you know, I can do this once, I'm not doing this twice, so I'm getting the fuck out of here, and then, uh, my one, like, older second cousin's kind of like, a, kind of like an uncle, It's like, Jay, come back to the group, whatever, nobody liked this post, nobody on Facebook liked this post, right, no, Jay, get the fuck out of here. So that's good. It's going to be tight with your family at the end of the world. Um, but I kind of brought it on myself. You know, that's what happens. You talk shit in the family Facebook group and, you know, you got to deal with it. It's what it is. So I feel bad for my mom because she has to, like, deal with everybody. Like, oh, Jake said this, Jake said that. It's like, fuck off, everyone. Like, the guy's drunk. Like, let him talk some shit. Get over yourself. Um, but there's always, there's like, there's this one uncle in my family <laughs> who's just, like, always beefing me. He's always looking for ways to fuck with me. I don't know why. I think he just, like, doesn't like my dad. Doesn't even really know me. But, like, he always fucks with me and tries to, like, like do shit behind my back and beef me. Uh, like, one time, I, I literally, like, he had, like, a family party. This is when I was, like, maybe 14. Maybe older. Maybe, just, maybe not probably older. Probably, like, 16. We'll say 16, 17. This happened last week, right? So, no, it was, like, it was early university, end of high school. Anyway, so everyone's drinking beers, and I go out. He has, like, a big backyard, so I go, and I pee on the back fence. I just took a quick piss on the back fence, right? No big deal. We go home, whenever He's texting my mom, calling my mom, freaking out. He's like, Jake's never welcome in my house. I can't believe he did that. Oh, my God. He's, like, freaking out because I pissed. I didn't pull my dick out for everyone to start urinating on the ground, which I, you know, I'm probably down to do that. I think it'd be funny, but I didn't do it there. I just peed on a back fence, right? Guy freaked out, lost it. So that was, like, you're a pussy. And, uh, then another time, like his daughter or something was like, yeah, there's this guy we work with. And, uh, he brought like a vape pad into work and his daughter at this point is like, you know, 17. So she's like, you know, not like a, a 10 year old. She's like, yeah, they brought a vape pad in. And then I guess either me or my cousin Megan was like, oh, did you try it on it? Like, that's a natural question. Right? If somebody says they'd be like, oh, did you try it? Like, how was it? That's what you would ask them. Right. A year goes by. And before, I think it was uh, Thanksgiving, he's like, tell my grandma. So I was like, yeah, like the cousins were asking if uh, she does weed and if she was smoking drugs and like just caused all this hullabaloo. My mom just lost it and snapped on the guy. He's like, fuck you, I'm not coming. It was like, what? and then I, I just texted him. I go, you're fucking soft. It's like, why, why are you trying to start shit a year later? Like, grow up, you know? It's a weird beef. And I think it's because one time when I was a kid, like way back in the day, probably I was like 10 years old. We had a big family gathering up in Blue Mountain huge dinner like all the family like 50 people right and uh maybe more even and he showed up in like full cowboy gear right <laughs> so the first thing i said i go <laughs> i go oh my god who invited brokeback mountain <laughs> right away all the uncles light up laughing huge pop huge laugh all the aunts were like oh my god jake how could you say that and he was just so like he was so excited to show his like full cowboy attire he got from like alberta and then like nice like a 10 year old just slammed and he was just like he was, like, so heartbroken by it. I was like, dude, like, fucking laugh, you know? Like, I don't get people in life. You, you, you can either take shit way serious and everything's a fucking big deal and a drama and oh, my God. Or you can just laugh and be like, wow, that's hilarious. Like, if that happened to me and some kid said that, I'd be peeing my pants laughing at this kid's awesome. I'd probably buy him a shot of rum. Like, it would be, that's what you do, you know? But some people are just fucking super serious and they suck. So, fuck that guy. Anyway, <laughs> he's not, imagine he watches this. <laughs> he could, we'll see, I don't know. It's not fuck that guy though. It's just like fuck anybody who like anybody who doesn't just like go with the joke. Like just fucking laugh and fuck around. When people get serious about shit, it's like oh, it's so gross, you know. What else do we got here? We're 14 minutes and I had a few notes here. I saw them um, too. I saw on uh, some videos, some bullshit video. It's so weird too. How all the shows are just like everyone's doing this now, just like streaming from their room. Like that's every form of TV now. But. Uh, I saw something and they're like, oh, Trump, like, why do you, why do you call it like the, the Kung Fu flu or something like the China flu or whatever? 
And he's like, because it is. <laughs> it's like, they made it. Like, it is. That's what it is. It's what it is. And then everyone's like, oh, I can't. He's so unpresidential. I can't believe how he fucking says that. Oh, my God. How can he divide people in time like this? It's like, they asked him a question. They asked him. <laughs> they asked him. Like, it's like he was just going around fucking yelling this. They asked him, like, why do you say that? He's like, well, because they made it. And they're like, oh, my God, I can't believe he fucking said that. Now, I'm not, like, defending the guy because he's probably done a lot of shit that's, like, absurd. I don't really follow news, and I don't really, I'm not into that world. Because politics and all that shit is, like, a sport just made for, like, 40-year-olds. Like, it's just like, dude, fuck off. It's all bullshit. Everyone's lying. It's all fucking pure conspiracy, but it's all a scam. So it's like, I'm not going to follow this. I'm like, oh, my guy said this, and he said that. And you got those people on Facebook, too. It's like constantly about Justin Trudeau and this and that it's like oh just watch sports and shut up you know like bitch about the Leafs fucking goaltending or the Raptors fucking like don't make politics your sport you know it's like you, you, can, you have no effect on it and like you tweeting or Facebooking it's like you're just like a fucking idiot but uh I thought it was funny though Trump saying kung fu flu that's like that's a good line he's he's probably the best comedian in the world right now I would say Donald Trump is the world's best comedian now, is that good for him to be president? Probably not. But if, is he a funny fucking guy? Probably one of the funniest. And, right, does he have coronavirus? Looks like it. Looks like it by recent pictures he has it. It's where it is, so who knows. Um, <laughs> fucking, that's the thing, though, man. Asians, like, they, did, I'm pretty sure they did swine flu. Chinese. And then now, eating bats, conspiracy theory, whatever, you know, you want to go with that. But it's like, can't trust them. They're fucking shady people, man. If they're making these diseases. It's like, I, I don't know. And also, yeah, I think another conspiracy mode here. They had all the like Chinese riots and stuff, the people uprising. It's like, oh, boom, now there's a fucking, now there's a flu. It's like, coincidence? I think not. And now it's spreading across the world. And it's like, oh, fuck. Like, million, I don't know. It's weird because these projections, too, like, how accurate can you be, right? Like, some are like, oh, yeah, like, a month or two, it'll be over. Others are like, two years, we're fucked. It's like, okay, like, I don't know. I don't know. Then you'd be like, oh, Corona only affects old people. Other people's like, no, it affects everyone. You get it, you're going to fucking die on the spot and become a zombie. It's like, I don't know, man. I don't know what to believe. But, uh, you know, it's what it is. But don't, I mean, don't be mean to Asian people. You need love. More than ever right now, you need love. So if you're going to fucking DM somebody, do it now. Send them a dick pic, shut it up, you know. If you <laughs> Imagine your girl doesn't answer when you're on quarantine. Like, you don't get a response. It's like, well, what excuse is there, you know? It's like you can't go to the bar four nights a week. You're just at home watching fucking TikToks and Love is Blind. Like, you fucking answer me. Say, same with, dude, just one guy, a buddy of mine. Like, I send him snaps. He, ne he never answers my snaps. He doesn't even open them. He, just, he waits like a month and opens all of them. And I text him, like, well, what are you doing with Snapchat? Like, why do you have it then, you know? He's like, what do you care? Because I send you funny shit, idiot. I'm like, what are you doing right now? It's so important. He's like, I'm working. I don't know what. What are you working on? And he's like, oh, you don't care. I'm asking you, you know? It's like, fuck, it's like, what are you, my boyfriend? It's like, oh, you don't care. It's like, no, I care, man. I don't care, but I care enough to ask you, you know? I don't know. So that guy's getting blocked off now. He's gone. He's dead to me. So that's, you know, that's exciting stuff. I don't know. Going to find love in a hopeless place, man. Sometimes that place is hinge. How hopeless are dating apps right now? You're going to talk to him for months? Maybe get a nude? You're not going to see him, so who gives a fuck, you know? So Jeannie Bouchard, like a lot of hot chicks going like, oh, I'm so lonely on fucking uh, quarantine, you know? It's like, are you? Or do you love it? Because here's the thing, man. You, you want to, like the first reaction, you say Jeannie Bouchard is some hot chick. Like, oh, I'm so lonely. Like, oh yeah, I want to come over. Like, I'll come by, I'll fuck her all the time. Like, imagine shooting rope on her, it'd be great. Nope. I'm speaking from my own experience here. Have you tried to hang out with a broad more than three days in a row? Have you? I don't know. Have you? I'm asking you a question. Have you? Because I know for me, that two and a half, three day mark, I'm ready to get in my fucking car and drive to the fucking moon as fast as I can. That first day is great. Oh, you're hanging out, you're having dinner, it's great. Right? Day two, you're like, okay, you know, if you like her and you get along, it's cool. Like, you're having a good time. By that third day, you're looking at this person like, why do I talk to you? Why am I? You're an idiot. You're an idiot and you're so fucking annoying. Why am I here? Well, I gotta get the fuck out of here. I have to get the fuck out of this situation. That's how I deal with it, at least. That third day, man. So if you're quarantined with a chick for like 
two, three, four weeks. Oh my God. I can't fucking imagine how it is. Like I got a buddy who's with his chick and like she's moved in, you know, is it a good idea? Probably not, but they're together and they're happy. I'm like, how is it? Day four? Like, what do you, how do you feel? He's like, right now it's, it's okay. Whatever. But it's like, I already know he's lying to me and I already know, you know, the sea, like the, it's like, there's a hole in the boat, you know, now the water's just leaking out and this quarantine it's not going to be good for a lot of relationships because a lot of people are like, oh, you get more time with your family, more of this. You don't want that, dude. You want the minimum amount of your time with your friends and family because then you go, you see them and it's enjoyable. You spend, hang out once or twice. Like, oh, this is cool. I like them, right? If you're with them all the time, you just slowly pick up things you hate about them and go, ah, he fucking does this. Or, oh, he's fucking, why does he keep doing this? Or, he keeps, she keeps fucking saying this. And you just lose your fucking mind. I don't know if other, maybe it's just me and I'm fucking weird. And like I, that, that's how I'd live my life. But it's like, I don't like being around the same people too often because then eventually it just bother me and it, it sours it. So I think people are coming out of the quarantine fucking thick as shit and probably single. So that's one positive, I guess. I need some water. I need to stay hydrated. Vitamin C, of course. Oh, another thing I was thinking about is like, when, when does the internet go? Because that's when I think panic will really set in, right? Because right now people are like, oh, I don't have to leave my house. So I just sit around and fuck around. It's like, yeah, that's what, that's what you're doing anyways. Like most people's lives are just that, right? It's like, even for me, it's like, I don't I go to coffee shops, go to the gym, do stand up. That's really about it. Like I'm not really going that many places. So it's a bit of an adjustment, but it's like, no, oh, whatever. I kind of, you know. I didn't realize how much I miss it, actually, the energy and, like, person-to-person interaction. But how often are you really out anyways? But when the internet goes down, oh, that's when shit's going to get real weird. Because right now people are just ripping Instagram, Netflix, you just do that YouTube till you're fucking, you know, you're blue in the face, what people are doing. I'm fucking so pale right now. It's incredible. But uh, first time I shaved all week, the hair, I'm fucking thick, I'm pale. What can you do, you know? But uh, when the internet goes down, like, who are we going to send to that fucking modem up in, like, up in the stars to reset the modem, hit reset, and fucking give us back internet? Because that's the biggest concern, I think. And I already read an article, too, that says Netflix is going to be, like, dropping the bit rate or something, so the quality will be 25% less. So instead of, like, 4K, you're going to get, like, 720 and 1080 and stuff. Just because it's, like, the broad band or something. I don't, I'm not a fucking nerd, but the broadband shit. Like, that's chewing away too much internet because people are working from home all the time. Once that pops, man, I think it will, too. I think at some point the internet will just, like, we're using so much, it'll just, like, pop. We're putting, it's like a balloon. We're blowing way too much into it, especially now. It's just going to fucking pop. And then people are going to be like, what do I do? Like, read a book? Can people read? I don't even know if people can read. They listen. All people do is listen to podcasts, listen to audiobooks. Can people actually sit down and read a book? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not even convinced of it. I don't know. I doubt it. We'll see, that's when it's going to get fucking real weird. What else do we got here, Frankie? I feel like we're ripping through stuff here. I wonder, too, if it's like... Uh, I was talking about this the other day. I'm like, will people be nicer coming out of this? Because the world was so, like... You know, just... Uh, like, toxic in a lot of ways. Like, people were just always... Outrage and this and that. Like there's still a lot of shit, right? So it's like, when you have something this big where you feel, like, very powerless against it... Are people going to come out and be, like, nicer and friendlier, just, like, better people? I doubt it. I think people are going to come out and whoever survives will just be more of an asshole. Because will be like, oh, I had to stay in and fucking watch movies for a month. This sucks. You know, it's like, okay, I guess. I know it's bad for the economy and everything. Like, people are going to be poor and fucking... There's a lot of side effects. I get that. But I hope one of them is people are, like, a little more thoughtful, a little more fucking aware... You know, I hope. I, I doubt it, but I hope. We'll see. Hopefully everyone's fucking kumbaya. It's great. Uh, hopefully that fucking girl with the big tits responds to me. I doubt it. Once again, I doubt it, but we're hoping for these things, right? I legitimately believe, though, like two, three weeks ago when I was sick, I might have had it. Like, I might have already had the Rona and beat it because I was really sick at that time two weeks ago. And now I'm, like, doing okay. So, I'm, I'll really, it was five days and I'm good. What kind of flu was that? Was it the Rona? Was it not? We'll never know. But I might have I might have beat it. Or I'm immune to it. I don't know. Those are the two things I'm going with. 
I was trying to watch, not trying to watch, I was on Snapchat, there's like some bullshit show, and they showed wrestling. Dude, wrestling with no fans is the creepiest shit I've ever seen. Like wrestling, anytime you're past like 15, wrestling is already like weird. I'm talking like WWE shit. But there's like a nostalgia factor where you're like, when you're a kid, I was like, oh, it was cool or whatever. Look at these big jacked up guys, you know. It's very strange, but I don't know. And they're, you know, not even fighting. But uh, to watch it now, like in an empty arena and they're just talking to each other, it's dead silent. It's the weirdest thing, man. It's literally just like they're doing a play and they're just wearing weird clothes and just like they're shitty actors. It's, it's the creepiest thing, man. And now WrestleMania is going to be like over two nights. It's like. Who's watching WrestleMania? Like, even though there's nothing on, it's like, I remember, like, I, I tried watching every, like, every year I like to watch WrestleMania. It's just, like, a thing. I like to have it on. It's like, yeah, I saw it. Like, it's just like the Super Bowl for me, kind of. But it's like, every year it gets longer. Like, I think, like, last year was, like, a six or seven hour event. It's like, okay, well, this is, it's over. You make it three hours and you shut your fucking mouth. Now we're doing two days in an empty arena? Why? What? Why? What, who needs this? What are we doing? And now the NBA, it's like, I really fucking so excited for the playoffs. So excited. And it looks like it's probably not going to happen. Because things would have to move very quickly. Because, like, the players, it's going to be, like, they're going to need time to get in shape, get in playing shape, get their legs under them. And even if they have an abbreviated playoffs, it's like, well, yeah, that's going to chew into next year. And then, you know, injuries. And it's just, there's so many factors. But I, I don't know. I hope they find a way to do, like, some sort of mini tournament or something happens. Because there's so many great teams and great storylines. And it's like, for, for there to be, like, an uncrowned champ, like, the year's over, that's fucking terrible, you know? And then you got Tom Brady or the Buccaneers. End times fun. Who the fuck? Buccaneers. TB12 and TB. It's, it's, he looks so fucking weird in their jerseys, like all the Photoshop, it looks so weird looking. And he left the Patriots, he said, peace on one of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Wow, world's over. I was watching too, before I got up here, uh, that Q documentary on Netflix, but like every, like in San Quentin, and they're all basketball players, and like they're in prison. And one guy's like the phenom, they're like, oh, this guy's, he can play in the NBA, he's like an NBA caliber player, he's 31. Misses a dunk in game. You're like, what? what are you talking about? This guy's like, not even that good. Misses one free throw. He's like, oh, fuck. Like, he's mentally out of the game. It's like, what, what are you talking about? And they're like, yeah, we were like, the Golden State Warriors came last year and like, we had to touch the trophy and you know, like, it makes you think like, I'm a fucking champion. You know, it's like, dude, you're in jail. Like, you're, I guess you need hope, but I'm, I'm only halfway through the doc now, but it's, it's good because like their coach is some little Mexican guy and like, he's kind of friendly. Like, oh, this is like, it's good because any sort of these docs, like, they humanize people in prison. So, like, you relate and, like, you kind of feel bad for them or like them. But what's good about this one is they do that and they, then they go to the guy and then he tells the crime he did and then they go to the family that the crime happened to. So, the Mexican guy is like, yeah, I was at a baseball game, you know. I've been wanting to kill somebody for a while and you're like, oh, my God. Like, that's, I can't believe <laughs> that's not good, you know. And he's like, yeah, and then, like, these guys, like, knocked on my window. They were drunk, like, knocked on my window and, uh. You know, they, they, they startled me, so I, like, I showed fear. I was, like, afraid of showing fear to people. So he was fearful of fear, you know? I'm just, like, showing it to people because he had to be, like, tough, you know, where he came from or whatever. So I chased the guy down. I was like, do I know you? Like, what the fuck? And I started fighting, and he's like, you know, and then we got broken up. And you're like, at this point, you're still like, oh, okay, like, this is, like, he just got in a fight. Like, maybe he broke a guy's nose. Like, it's whatever. We can let him off, you know? And then he's like, yeah, and then... <laughs> And I pull my knife out and cut this guy's heart in half. And you're like, oh my God, oh my, oh my God. Like, what, what? It's like, yeah, I just stabbed him and I, I, I just cut across and just cut his heart in half. You're like, oh, oh fuck. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I can't believe. And then he's like, yeah. So then the guy looked at me and I could see like he knew like his, his life was leaving him. And I was like, yeah, don't let this guy out. Don't let this fucking guy out. I don't give a fuck how good of a basketball coach he is. How friendly he seems. Fuck that guy. Keep that guy in a fucking hole, you know? And then they show the family, and the mom's like, yeah, I can't believe this guy fucking killed my son, you know? So it's a, it's a good doc. It's an uplifting documentary so far, so we'll see. Q on Netflix, but uh, a lot of good shit. I'll give you, I'll give you, we'll do that, but end the pod with that. We'll do a quick uh, Netflix suggestions here. I was watching last night, this is not on Netflix, but I was watching uh, One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest with my boy Jack Nicholson. And... Uh, 
What a movie. What a fucking movie, dude. I don't want to ruin it, but if you can watch it on Amazon and iTunes, go watch One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest. Fucking banger of a classic movie, dude. Uh, okay, Netflix suggestions here. We'll do Netflix suggestions, and then eh, maybe we'll just wrap on that. Okay, all the Godfathers are on Netflix, and I can almost guarantee if you're watching this, you haven't seen them. Because I didn't. I'm, a, I'm the biggest fucking movie guy in the world. I didn't fucking see... I watched them when I was a kid, like, with my dad, like, when I was a really little kid on, like, VHS, like, way too early. And I didn't really remember them. Like, I remembered, like, you know, the horse head and, like, different stuff. In Godfather 3, the two cousins making out and, like, banging. Like, I remembered that. Spoiler alert, it happened 30 years ago. And, uh... But then, in December, I watched all three of them. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, just blew my mind how great they are. They still hold up, and it's just... Wow, what a, what a triumph in cinema. So, uh, go watch Godfather. Have a Godfather day. They're all on Netflix. Go have a Tarantino day. Watch all his movies from his first one all the way through. All of them except Once Upon a Time in Hollywood are on Netflix, I'm pretty sure. So, go watch that. Jackie Brown's my favorite, but go watch all those. Lord of the Rings is on Netflix. Have a Lord of the Rings day. Rip a Lord of the Rings day. That's nine, ten hours. You're watching Orcs. You're watching Hobbits. You're watching fucking All the Boys. Flinging shit, stabbing people. It's fucking great. Go watch that. Dark Knight Trilogy on Netflix. Go have a Batman day. Get balls deep in Batman. And then get super excited for Batman. And then go, oh yeah, Robert Pattinson's playing in. He's wearing a weird outfit and it looks fucking horrible. But go watch Dark Knight. The Trilogy. Ready Player One just dropped on Netflix. Came out like two years ago. One of my favorite movies of that year. I actually went to the movie theater in uh, Oakville and... I got sucked off. We were watching it. So that was a good, that was a little place in my heart, you know? Good little place in my heart, that movie. But it was a fucking banger of a flick, so watch that. Um, okay, this is just one, this is a double feature. It's not on Netflix, but you gotta do it. Have a watch The Shining with Jack and uh, Dr. Sleep. Do a quick double feature of that. And uh, that'll give you a few days. I got some more suggestions, but we'll leave that. Um, I think that's about it, folks. We're 31 minutes in. Hopefully I gave you a little bit of a laugh here. We'll see. And, uh, you know, stay alive. Keep staying alive. Keep, you know, living the good fight. Hopefully there's some good news and, uh, you know, the world, you know, gets better. We'll see. I don't know. 